figured I'd record a video just to talk a little bit about something that I'm really excited about, and um, that's my uh, gun rest that I made over the weekend. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to put a link to the, uh, to the description of everything that I used to make this and the approximate cost. Um, you know, if, if I'm figuring it up correctly, I think it cost me somewhere around $30 to $35. Um, as opposed to, you know, going to one of these main uh, retail stores or going online where you're going to spend uh, a minimum of $80 for something that um, just simply holds your gun in place. Um, if you're like me, you love shooting a gun, but you don't always trust yourself in terms of um, <clears throat> getting set up and uh, being as still as you need to be to make sure you have an accurate sight. Um, I can always stay within a pretty good range. Um, you know, the bullseye, but I'm just not one of those people that feels comfortable going and saying, you know, that I'm going to put everything that I know about sighting a gun in on my ability because it's very limited. Um, I have a good friend who's a retired Green Beret who, um, you know, taught me many years ago in terms of, you know, uh, going in to shoot an animal, um, <clears throat> you know, wrapping the sling around your arm like this in order to be able to get a good sturdy grip so if you don't have anything to prop it on you at least have a lot of tension a lot of leverage there to be able to look through your scope and feel pretty good about the shot and i've shot many deer that way um, when i don't have anything to prop on or whatever so this is my <clears throat> gun rest um, that i used um, the other day for the first time at um, the shooting range right down the road and of course you can see kind of its basic construction again i'll put a link for all the things that i ordered or you know, constructed here. Um, missing from that is, of course, a uh, sock rest for the uh, muzzle on the very end. And then there's an additional sock rest that you put on top of the first one. And um, just kind of show you how I made this. I did go to <clears throat> Pinterest and I looked at a lot of different models. I just did a regular Google search as well. I probably, look, probably looked at three or four dozen gun rest uh, before I made up my mind what I wanted to do. And uh, if you've not seen my recent chair that I made um, out of landscape timbers, um, <clears throat> I had some you know remaining um, landscape timbers that were left over, and I just decided to cut a piece. I think it's around 30 inches long. That's the longer piece. And then, of course, you've got these two pieces on the end, which were you know 20 to 22 inches each. I think that's kind of insignificant. Um, of course, you can see how I screwed it in here. Um, <clears throat> not a very good job on this side. I'm actually showing you the ugliest side. I cut a little notch out <clears throat> because this clamp that I bought on Amazon, um, I had to buy an additional 3 8 inch, uh, 4 inch long bolt. And of course you see the nut that's tied in, um, that's screwed in there. And then of course the bottom of the bolt is right there. So I had to cut a little notch out <clears throat> to accommodate that. And then of course, you know, used five inch screws, one on top, one on each side, and then I don't think I used any on the bottom, but then to adjust the height level, um, I bought these little um, furniture um, leg mounts, and I just drilled a hole and screwed those in, and of course they adjust, adjust up and down. So like when I go to the shooting range, when I get set up, I have to accommodate my gun, if I have it rested on something, it has to be lifted up because the target is a little bit higher than where I'm sitting. So um, I did buy four of them. I wound up not putting the other two on the back just because I knew I would constantly kind of be shooting upward. So just for the whole time element, um, I figured I'd just hold off on that. But it already came in handy. So this is the basic setup of how the rifle works. Um, you can do it to accommodate whatever type of rifle you need. I've also put a 22 long range rifle. I've put in shotguns just to test them and they work really well. Um, on this side over here, um, there is a, an adjustable screw that uh, clamps in your gun. And of course it's got um, rubber, um, a rubber protective cover there on both sides so it doesn't scratch your gun. Um, this is synthetic and rubber here anyways, but um, could accommodate most any type of gun, <clears throat> especially if you've got a um, you know a gun that means a lot to you. Maybe it's wood grain, and you don't want it to be damaged. 
as you can see how it sits, um, the larger sock, I got this idea from a, a YouTube video, I believe it was a former ranger or somebody in the military, I'll look the video up and provide a link for that as well, um, but I actually filled this up with, it's like a pound bag, two pound bag of rice, and then I added a um, fairly good sized container of BBs that um, my sons have not had a chance to shoot yet, um, but um, it weighs... I don't know, four or five pounds, five or six pounds. It's pretty durable, doesn't have a lot of give to it. <clears throat> but um, my mother-in-law actually gave me this sock, which is rice, and it's very, very conformable to the muzzle of your gun. So the other day when I took this and shot, it was really neat to see just how easy it was to be able to adjust your um, the height level as, you, um, as I was shooting. Um, it just was very conformable and it kept it very still. You can see the side where I screw in the screwed in the um, the clamp there, and then of course there's the sock rest. And I was amazed to see how many videos former military or even current military personnel um, utilize this strategy. And some of them even talked about the importance of using rice as they could use it to cook a meal um, if they were out in the field. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, a lot of good ideas with that. But, um, but that's the basic setup. All right, so if you look at this sheet here, this is my shooting from uh, November the 7th. I uh, went out about 11.30 that morning, and I took three different rifles. I took my <clears throat> Thompson Sitterfire 308, which is what I've got in the uh, mount here. I took a Winchester 270, and then I also took a 30-06 carbine. And, um, of course, you can see the different results. Uh, the 30 alt 6 um, was, my mother, was my wife's grandfather's that he passed down, left to her um, after he passed away. And it sat for a long time, so you can see the grouping there was, you know, about four inches off to the left and down. And then, of course, I got to here. These were my last shots that day. It's all I had time for. Um, <clears throat> but you can see it gradually moved as I got there. The um, 270, you can see where I sighted it in. It was a little bit lower that day, and uh, that's where it started, and that's where it, uh, I grouped it. Then I got it moved up to here, and then, of course, this is where I started. I, no, I believe this was the initial, no, this was the initial shot with the 308. I see where I've got it labeled, <clears throat> and then I moved it up to here. So you can see all the way around, I'm within an inch, uh, a little bit over an inch from the red, the bullseye, but nonetheless, there was no, no red. So um, after putting all three of the rifles into this mount, I went back a few days later, and you got to remember, I was already fairly well sighted in. I mean, I had a pretty good sight, felt good about it, but you can see my first shot with the 270. I was up pretty good. I don't know if the scope got knocked or whatever, but you know I was up and <clears throat> to the right a good bit. But you can see what happened once I got it into the mount and had it adjusted. Um, for the time I had, we only had like 30 minutes to shoot, so I could have gotten it a little bit more calibrated. My last shot was right in here. Um, <clears throat> so the last one I adjusted a little bit more and got it in the bullseye. The 308, I was really proud of this shot because it was you know right at two inches high at 50 yards. That's what I meant to say as well. All of this siding in was at 50 yards. And then this is where I finished up in the red. And then you see the 30 alt 6 from earlier. This is where I finished up the day free arm and everything. And then this is where I finished up afterwards. And you can see I just blew it to pieces um, right there in the red. So I was very, very proud of that. And then of course the 30 alt 6 as well. So everything is less than half an inch or about half an inch from the red in every direction. So uh, most shots that I have in the stand are going to be less than you know 70 yards anyways. And I hunt in about four or five different locations across Georgia and North Carolina. Um, and no shot that I'm going to take on average is going to be more than you know 70 yards at the most. Um, I would like to get this on the range again, have it locked in, and try to sight it at 100 yards just to be sure. Um, but like I said... We'll work on that later. But I'm very proud of where it is right now. So um, 
very reliable tool. My father-in-law even admitted, <clears throat> my father-in-law even admitted afterwards, he says, next time I come, I definitely want to have that just to, uh, um, you know, to be sure. So anyways, it worked out. Well, I definitely appreciate you watching this video. Um, I hope it was something that you will consider doing on your own. Uh, if you're like me and you're kind of on a budget and, um, well, excuse me, on a very strict budget, and, um, but you love shooting, you love doing things, um, you know, like hunting or whatever, or even just going down to the range and just having some fun, seeing how close you can get sighted in and uh, be accurate at various distances. Um, so I hope it was something that you enjoyed. I don't know. I don't usually do these kind of videos. Um, but if it's something that you're interested in, if you want to message me and, um, you know, I'd be more than happy to talk with you and tell you things that work, didn't work, uh, things that maybe other ideas that I had uh, before I went with that final model. Um, I will put a description for everything that I looked at and got ideas from because uh, I do believe in giving credit where credit is due. Um, if you're interested in me possibly making you one of these, you know, we can talk about that as well. Um, I, I made mine for 30 to 35 bucks, uh, but you may have other things in mind. You know, feel free to message me and, uh, you know, happy hunting and I hope you enjoyed it. And like I said, like, subscribe, um, you know, check out some of the other videos that we have. We've got things on uh, cooking and goofy videos with that, with the kids. And, um, <clears throat> you know, this, this channel is not intended to make money. It's just, you know, something fun that, uh, students kind of challenged me to do uh, a while back and uh, we just had fun with it so uh, feel free to check out other stuff we have and uh, god bless you and look forward to seeing you again soon